Good morning, everybody. We're glad to have you here on this glorious day of a wonderful weekend. I always feel that at this time of the year, when we get days like this, this is God's grace. We're on borrowed time. So we're glad to have you here for this more solemn service of remembrance. May we be open to your spirit, O God, and may your radiance surround us in this time of Pentecost.
the grace of our sovereign Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Also with you. Our opening hymn, and I understand you warmed up to it a few weeks ago, but it's a, a good one, one of the better ones from More Voices by uh, an Aust uh, New Zealand, sorry, a New Zealand writer. Uh, she is the spouse of the former moderator of the Presbyterian Church in New Zealand, uh, Shirley Arena Murray. God of the Bible, number 28 in More Voices.
a newer hymn for a day like today. I love the imagery of not by God's finger, not by God's anger, will our world order change in a day. But by your people, fearless and faithful, small paper lanterns lighting the way. May we be those small lanterns lighting the way to a world of peace where we finally acknowledge that the cross was meant to be the last sacrifice. May we pray, and this morning, be in good voice, you begin the prayer. May we pray. We give thanks for the noblest efforts of those who dedicated and, in some instances, gave up their lives for Canada. We humbly give thanks for those who did sacrifice all so that others may live in liberty. So out of appreciation and gratitude, we bring them to your ever-living presence. We remember our wounded and fallen Canadian soldiers from the battles of Queenston Heights, of Chrysler's Farm, of Passchendaele, of the Somme, of Vimy Ridge, of Ypres, of Juneau Beach, of Britain, of Monte Cassino, of El Alamein, of Normandy, of Nanjing, of the Atlantic, of the Korean conflict, of the Afghanistan conflict, and of the terrorist attacks in Ottawa and Saint-Jean-sur-Richelieu. We beseech you now to hear the petitions on behalf of others that we bring before you in silent prayer. To these prayers, we lift up all in this land for the mourning the loss of a one loved one in the Canadian forces, both those lost in battle and more recently those who have taken their own lives because of post-traumatic stress syndrome. We pray for their families' healing. We pray for greatest awareness in the halls of power, greater sensitivity to the discord present in our armed forces. We pray for others who are mourning this day, including the family of Reverend Robert Shank, a former minister of this community of faith. For those to hear sadder songs that are associated with this service and the service on the 11th, that it brings the wound fresh yet again, we do pray for your spirit's presence and healing. We pray for those members of the forces who upon return have not been able to fit back 
into the tapestry of our society. And like dangling threads are left on the streets, homeless and not able to return to a life they once knew. We pray for compassion for this land. We pray for your spirit of justice in those exercising there this weekend. We pray that Montreal might be truly a global city, shining light of harmony and inclusion and justice and sensitivity to a planet in peril. We pray for those who are facing surgery, those recovering from surgery, and those who are suffering of illness of body or mind or spirit. O oh God, hear our prayers. These are the concerns that weigh heavily on our hearts this morning that we now turn over to the grace of Christ. From Voices United 365, not that many of you will need the hymn book, Jesus loves me, this I know. The epistle this morning is from the book of the Hebrews, chapter 9, verses 24 to 28. For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself, and now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf nor was it to offer himself again and again as the high priest enters the holy place, year after year, with blood that is not his own. Or then he would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once, 
and after that the judgment. So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. This is the witness of the early church. The responsive reading is taken from the Voices United, 8 to 1. Unless God builds the house, its builders have labored in vain. Unless God watches over the city, those who keep watch stay awake in vain. In vain you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil. For those whom God loves are given seed. children are a gift from God, an offspring a reward from God's hand. Like arrows in a warrior's hand, so indeed are the children of one's youth. Happy are those who have their quiver full of them. They will not be put to shame when they meet their adversaries at the gate. The reading is from the book of Mark 12, from 38 to verses 24. As he thought, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogue and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance, say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put into small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples, disciples and said to them, Truly, I'll tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed of their abundance, to, as she is out of property, property uh, has put in everything she had all to live on. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. More voices, number 37, each blade of grass. Child. 
Sorry, folks, we're experiencing some technical difficulties. I don't know if to beware of long robes, but beware of long cords. I begin the sermon this morning with the territorial acknowledgement that has been on the screen and a reminder this morning of the involvement of the First Nations in global wars, fighting for this land and for the land south. I remember Remembrance Day services when I was minister in Ganawage and we had the Marines and the U.S. Navy, as well as the Canadian forces present. And a reminder that they are citizens of North America. But were used in many instances in the war and in the American, even to the Vietnam, once called conflict, to be messengers because the other nations could figure out anything but their languages. It was very difficult to figure out their languages. And so they were employed, but often at great personal risk. And there was a film on last night with Nicolas Cage about that very subject. And how the experience of many in First Nations of, is of being used and then put away, forgotten. We hope this is changing. More than meets the eye. We see but don't see. It's known that anyone in the legal system for witnesses what they see changes over time, what they remember. Try to think of what you did yesterday, step by step, or a week ago, and on back. We know that it's difficult, and what we remember changes. Is what we see in our mind isn't necessarily a videotape of what happened. It passes through our experience and our filters. And I apologize this morning for showing you this shocking painting. Do any of you know it? Put your hands up. Anyone recognize this painting? A few do. It's by the French artist Marcel Duchamp. And it's called Nude Descend Descending a Staircase. Second version. Well, don't worry if you didn't figure out it out because when it was first displayed at the Museum of Modern Art in New York, it was upside down. Duchamp looked at a new process called photography and the stilled images of a nude descending a staircase and then paints this as he combines to try to capture motion in a new way. Capturing motion in the stillness of art or of painting or sculpture has always been the challenge for great artists. It was thought the Hellenistic Greeks did it best, and after that, Bernini in sculpture, where you can see the movement. And others would say Rembrandt. It's more than what you see, as is the following one that might be more acceptable. Hans Holbein, during the reign of Henry VIII of that name, a painting called The Ambassadors in the National Gallery in London. And looking at it front on, you see this rather strange scroll-looking look, object at the bottom. And yet, as you see, when you turn to the side of the painting, this is what you see. 
a human skull. The classical imagery of momenti, memento mori, remember death. In life, remember death. And in uh, some of our discussions and the history of the church, it was reminded in that medieval to renaissance period, uh, the church's claim was, uh, you best prepare yourself because you'll be dead longer than you'll be alive. And so that was used in many cases uh, for power, unfortunately. More than meets the eye. This morning we are looking at remembering. Remembering those who have fallen in conflict. And there's a wonderful image for me. I, I like movies, but the film Elizabeth I. And you have the scene with Walsingham, the Machian, Machiavellian worker of works and deeds in Elizabeth's court, Protestant, probably more atheist, if anything. Certainly, convenience was his religion. And he has tricked Norfolk, a Catholic, and is now come to arrest Norfolk, who was betrayed by his mistress. And Norfolk says, cut off my head, make me a martyr, the people will always remember me. And Walsing's response is, no they won't, they will forget, we all forget. No they won't. We forget. We forget the names on the plaques and shrines around this sacred place for human beings. Had stories, had hopes, had dreams, were loved. And with great courage placed themselves in great danger and in the case of those honored here, gave their lives for the freedom of this land. And I'm hoping that more will remember that in the current situation we find ourselves in. You heard in my prayers this morning that a prayer for dignity, for honoring what was given for our liberty. And when I feel liberty becomes license for my rights and my way and not the greater good, it, in my mind, dishonors the gift of those who help provide our liberty. It's a costly thing, liberty. So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time not to deal with sin, according to this author. Not to deal with our estrangement from God. That's been put away. In his theology, that is no longer pertinent. But save to bring health, salus, health, interchangeable, to bring health, wholeness, shalom to those who eagerly wait the message. The idea that Christ sacrifices himself, that that might end it. Hence my liking of that hymn by Murray, when the world changes and faces the cross. Not saying that the world all needs to become Christian, but to show what innocence suffers in the courses of empire and violence and injustice. That the innocent suffer at the hands of power, the powerful. 
Certainly, much of the art, including the music of Benjamin Britten, came out of the experience of the war and the war after the war to end all wars. And there's a discord in the music and in the art. There's shock and horror. The paintings of Francis Bacon are disturbing, and the operas of Benjamin Britten are equally disturbing. Things aren't quite right. We have yet to face what we do to one another. And those in places of power and building empires move like pawns, forgetting their responsibility to serve those very pawns rather than to use them. I hope that's familiar to you. If you look over there, you'll find it. A list of fallen, in this case men, from this congregation in the Second World War. It's beautiful. I congratulate those who designed it and offered it here in this beautiful space. For me, it is one of the most beautiful ones I've ever seen. And over the course of my ministry, I've seen many. But how often have you passed by it, seen it, but not really seen it? Oh, you might have looked at a name here or there. You might have enjoy, uh, enjoyed the color of the coat of arms and the beautiful contrast of the gilt against the beautiful grain of the wood. But that was not, nor is it not, its purpose. It's to bring in this community their living memory. I once heard a funeral at a sermon for the death of a child, and I thought it was very wise. That, that Hebrew scripture, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Not I was the God. I am. In me, they still live. They are still with me living. And that whole idea of communion of saints here that we celebrated not long ago is that they are present with us in some way, in some mystical way, more than just thought, present. That we are to be mindful of them and their witness, and in this case their sacrifice, as we try to live our lives in godly and righteous ways with dignity. So let's do a little looking Three of the names that you will find. Squadron leader Ian Mackenzie McRoby dies at the age of 22, 6 13, 1944, and is buried, or remains they thought were his, in the United Kingdom. William Andrew Eden, 20. November 1944, buried in Singapore. And Donald John Applin, June the 13th, 1944, at the age of 21. Are we fortunate to have anyone here this morning that's in their 20s? You're in your 20s, Miriam? <laughs> you knew two of them. Anyone in their 20s? Okay. Think of this. Think of this. Find dapper young men. And it's easy to find them. I'm really, really pleased. I thought I might have to do greater digger, uh, greater 
digging and, and deeper digging to find, but we've come a long ways as a nation in terms of honoring, and it's fairly easy. So during the offering, I'm going to, I'm going to give a, a challenge to you. I'm going to ask you to go and each one of you and write down one name from one of our plaques and research them. We're not, we're worshiping in advance of November the 11th. Maybe it's a good time to do that before the service, if you can. Find out who they were, what they looked like, and maybe how they were part and are spiritually still parts of this community of faith. As Auden says, there's always another story. There's more than meets the eye. Stories. Stories that are part of our stories, that are part of our faith in Christ, lest we forget. And Ross Evelyn Johnson, 21, July 17, 1944, is not only the photograph, but if you go to our narthex, the stained glass window, one of my favorites because it's very different. It's a reminder again of the light of God coming through that imagery. That's why we have stained glass windows. The idea that with the light of God coming through them, they are alive in some way. Uh, that their light is God's light that enters into the light that we bring. There are many, many ways of looking at things. But from here we look at things from the eyes of the spiritual and through the lens of the cross. Amen. I know we are probably breaking protocol, but I would ask for this remembrance that if you are able to stand, if you would please do so.
offering will not be physically collected. It is available for your tithes and offerings. There's a plate at the back for those of you who are not on par. But as I said, I'd ask you to reflect on those who are with us in spirit in this community of faith, lest we forget.
our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. From Voices United, 642, Be Thou My Vision. Holy One, Prince of Peace, may we reflect on that and what the realm of Christ is called to be, a realm of justice, for without justice there is no peace, a realm of love and compassion, a realm that we are capable of, but find it very difficult to walk the walk. 
But people of God, be assured that the Holy One walks with you. That the radiance of the divine shines on you always. That the face of God is there before you, ever before you. And the peace of Christ is in your hearts. And may that bring you peace. Amen. Thank you.